Hello, what about you? You're very welcome. And if you like any of this stuff, don't forget to hit that little subscribe button that's somewhere down there. I don't know where. That'd be very kind of you to do that. And uh, this week, an interesting story. This week, uh, uh, it's been revealed that a Scottish school teacher who was doing his master's in, in computing has invented a new online board game based on the troubles here in Northern Ireland. Yes, the, the teacher, uh, Hugh O'Donnell, uh, decided that a, a online board game would be a wonderful way to immerse people in the history of Northern Ireland and the troubles and give them uh, a very deep insight into that period of our recent history. In the game, you can choose to be either a loyalist or republican paramilitary, a member of security forces, or a nationalist or unionist politician. Now, now, Mr. O'Donnell has assured everyone that the paramilitaries in the game cannot win. The winner of the game must expunge all the others, but a paramilitaries cannot win unless they're brought to peace. Yes, he has built that into the, into the game itself. <laughs> you just know, you just know that right now, as soon as this comes out, there's going to be we loyalists and we Republican hackers who are going to do something completely different. Oh, I can imagine a nice middle class family in the home county, say, playing the game. And the, the father suddenly goes, I say, I say, there's, there's, a, there's, there's a message come up on my screen. It just said, you, 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 you English bastard. You have 10 seconds before your computer goes, is this part of the game? My computer's gone. My computer's gone. There's no, there, this is, there's a, there's, there's a, there's a picture of Jerry Adams and, and a message up the ra. Is this part of the game? I told, I told you Tarquin not to buy this game. I told you it wasn't a good idea. My computer now, control, alt, delete, control, alt, delete, control, alt, delete. I told you Tarquin this was not a good idea. <laughs> Five years in its creation and costing £800,000, the uh, Commission on Flakes, uh, Identity, Culture and Tradition, better known as FICT, uh, finally came out with their findings in a 168-page document which the uh, local political parties have been burying for the last year. Now, there was plenty of facts, but sadly, there's no action. Yep, the problem may be that of the 15 members uh, 15 commission members, seven were drawn from local political parties. On bonfires, the commission uh, have said that they are uh, important as an aspect of culture, identity and tradition, but that people should only be collecting for their bonfires no sooner than six weeks before the actual bonfire. Are you mad or what? Are you mad or what? How do you expect us to get 2,000 pallets? In six weeks? What do you think we are, mules? They also suggested the development of a skills-based art program to harness the talent, creativity of the bonfire makers. Brilliant idea. I can see it now. Wait, Billy. Wait, Billy. Hold on here. Wait, Billy. We are not going to build the usual pyramid bonfire. No, 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 no. We are going to use our creativity, imaginations. And I see it now, what we are going to build this year to burn is a replica of the Vatican. Can you see it? Can you see it? If we don't get a grant for this, we'll get a grant for nothing. On the thorny issue of fleeks, the Commission, and I quote, could not agree on whether changes should be made on current legislation in order to create a similar exemption to that which exists for election posters. Consequently, without any legislative changes, the Commission is not in a position to recommend a code of practice that would accompany any such legislative change. <laughs> Let me translate that. We ain't touching this. Not in mea culpa. I am. <laughs> I'm not going near that, son. You have not paid me enough for that. Uh, they did agree, however, on flags that flags should, and I quote, never be flown in a worn or damaged condition or when soiled. Now, this raises an interesting question. What sort of of dirty bastards have we in our community that are climbing up lampposts to wipe their arses on our flags. What the commission did agree on with regard to flags is that there was a possibility to develop a new civil flag for Northern Ireland. Now, this flag would not be of a regional or national flag, but a civic flag. 
incorporating representations of Britishness, Irishness, and our collective diversity. <laughs> what a load of shit. Are you serious? Oh, you're sitting there. You're sitting for five years. And the best you could come up with. Here, here. I've had an idea. Oh, 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 when you hear this, let's get another flag. Do you know what Northern needs? Northern needs another flag. Let's get another flag. Worth the 800,000 quid there, boys and girls. Now, of course, the reason that Northern Irish politicians don't particularly want to enact any of the recommendations is that we're not far away from an election. And we all know how useful flags are to Northern Irish politicians at election time. They know all they have to do is wave their flag and you will all come out like Pavlovian dogs to the ballots and you will do your little X. You may be looking at that for a millisecond thinking he's one useless bastard, but you will quickly remember, yes he is, but he's my useless bastard. Who knows? Some good may come out of all this. Who knows? Maybe in a few years' time, a commission will be held to consider the problems of commissions in Northern Ireland, and that commission will report on the commissions, and it will be ignored. The one thing, of course, that will never change, the one thing that is guaranteed, is that everybody gets paid. Everybody gets paid. The politicians get paid, the commissioners probably get paid, everybody gets paid. The one guaranteed thing that will never change here is you can do sweet F.A., talk shite, and you'll still get paid. Kerching. Belfast-based artists, the Array Collective, walked away this week with nothing less than the 2021 Turner Prize for their recreation of a traditional Irish bean. Their installation was designed as a place to gather uh, outside the usual sectarian mindset which has dominated Northern Ireland for the last 100 years. Personally, I think this is an amazing achievement and all congratulations to the artists involved. Now, of course, the mockers have already started. You know what? That's a joke, so it is. See, that's a joke. That's not, that's not real art, so it is. That's a joke, so it is. I had to do it myself. No, you couldn't. Just because you don't understand it doesn't mean it's not real art. There are many things in life I have not understood. Do you know what I did? I read a book. Go read a book. It might be an idea. The 11 artists involved walked away with a collective prize of £25,000. Now, if they had really been jokers, they would have set up a commission, ballsed about for five years, created nothing, and walked away with the 800000 quid. Thankfully, we can all relax now about Omicron after world-renowned virologist and DUP MP Sammy Wilson gave his determination. Yes, on his Twitter feed, Sammy poetically said, and I quote, Ding dong merrily on high will be replaced this Christmas by ping dong miserably we sigh. I will vote against new restrictions in Parliament today. They are not proportionate to deal with the spread of the mild COVID variant Omicron. It was at that very second that world leaders had a collective sigh of relief because it's not a well-known fact but Sammy has played a very an essential role in the pandemic and are dealing with it. Because Sammy is known around the world to be the man who put full in foolhardy and is seen as a litmus test on bullshit. Yes, world leaders know whatever Sammy says to do the complete opposite. When Sammy decided he wasn't going to wear his mask, we all knew how important it was to wear ours. And now that Sammy has said that Omicron is mild, we know to take it seriously. Yeah, oh well. Luckily, the new temporary DUP leader uh, didn't take the news of being undermined by Sammy Wilson too hard. When he was eventually traced down to his island resort and asked for a response, he said, I don't really care. <laughs> Give me a margarita. Sadly, there's no Terry this week. He forgot to press record. I'm not making that up. And I can't talk because I've done it myself once or twice. 
And uh, I have to let you know what Terry's all right because a lot of you already know that the reason I call him Two Stroke Terry is that he's had two strokes. Yes, <laughs> he was like that. He's had two strokes. Yeah, uh, I found out about this on tour a couple of years ago, and we were about four shows in. We were up playing in Enniskillen, and Terry let me know. Now he was clever that way. He waited till we were three shows in, and he knew I couldn't replace him. What's even worse is. I still can't get a grant for him. But anyway, Terry went out to do uh, his business in Enniskillen, beautiful theatre, uh, right beside the lakes, beautiful place. And I was in the dressing room, and this is a true story, I was in the dressing room uh, waiting, and there's a wee radio thing in most dressing rooms, and you can hear what's going on on stage. Now, after he told me he'd had two strokes, as you can imagine, I'm not a complete heartless bastard. I look like one, but I'm not. And I was a bit worried, you know what I mean? Just what? So I'm sitting waiting to get ready and I'm listening to Terry out on the stage. He's storming, as he always does, doing really well. And then from nowhere, I heard the most blood-curdling scream. I thought he's gone. He's trapped. I have never got to a stage as quick in my life. I got there. He's just performing away. No big deal. Come off stage. We're sitting in the dressing room. Hey, what happened? I says to him, what happened? <clears throat> You're not going to believe us, he says. What happened was... He was in the middle of his act when a bat, a bat, bat, flew from the back of the theatre, dive-bombed him on stage and took off back to the theatre. At the Now, seemingly, at that time, there was a bat in the theatre in Enniskillen, a bat which would come out and dive-bomb when he saw fit. And I was a bit nervous doing my set, I have to admit. Now, anyway, it all went well. And uh, <clears throat> went back to the hotel. Next morning, I go down, driving back home, and I called in to get a coffee at McDonald's, as I do. And I'm standing there, and I realise there's a big farmer has clocked me. Now, he's one of them boys, you know when you get clocked, right? somebody recognises you or they want to talk to you, but they're not completely, and he's sort of, and he's done the wee sort of crab walk. They sometimes do this sort of side walk towards you. And he was a big boy, about six foot four, big lump of a lad. And he says, is it yourself? Is it, is it yourself? I'm always tempted at that moment to go, no, well, who do you think I am? But I didn't, because it's a big chain. Uh, how are you doing? I was at the show last night, hey, and that was, come, that was good crack, hey. I tell you, I, I didn't want to go now. I thought you were shite. It's the wife bought the tickets. I was surprised. What do you say? Thanks very much. He's that big. Thanks very much. You know, that was good. That was brilliant. Hey, I just, can, can I ask you a question? He looks at me. Hey, of course you can ask me anything you want. No, it's been bothering me all night now. I just, I just, I was wondering, hey, I was wondering, do you boys use the same bat every night? <laughs> I went, <laughs> and then I realised he wasn't joking. He wasn't joking. This character believe we brought Dracula bats from Belfast to let go. I went, oh, no, no, we, we, we rotate them. We, we, when you're cutting the RSPCA, wouldn't let us. We have to rotate the bats. We'll do a different battery, just give him a wee bit of a rest, you know what I mean? So Terry will be back next week, and uh, we're out on tour this year. Uh, we're going to be, every except Enniskillen, we're not in Enniskillen, sadly the theatre's closed. I don't know why, maybe the bat has taken over, I don't understand. Um, but we're everywhere else, and if you'd like to come and see us, that'd be very, very nice. And it runs from the end of December through to February, and I was very confident about it. I thought, yeah, going to enjoy this after two years. And then Sammy Wilson said that Omicron wasn't serious, and now... I'm shaking myself. <laughs>